Where did it originate? Why is it in our midst? And what are we being told it is there for? Uh, we know that this in its present form, it was set up in 2009, January. They created this, the government created this uh, unique identification authority of India. And this authority was tasked with uh, producing a unique identity number for each individual resident, not only for citizens, but for every individual resident in this country. In uh, July 2009, Mr. Nandan Elekati was uh, appointed as the chairperson. And since then, there has been a lot of activity to reach a point where the project can actually take off. And on September 29, 2010, uh, you might have seen on television, uh, Manmohan Singh and Sonia Gandhi were uh, at a village in Nandurga, Tenkili village, where they gave out the first numbers. So that was the that was this actual rollout of the project. The remarkable thing about it is that uh, Mr. Nilagiri had said that he would be making, uh, he would be starting the rollout of the numbers between August. Uh, 2010 and March 2011, and he did in fact do it early in that time. So the uh, the question of efficiency in starting the rolling out of numbers was established. In uh, the reason that this project, this particular project at this stage, the way it is being rolled out now, the reason that's being given for it, what they say would be the purpose of this project is to help in reaching. Uh, reaching benefits and entitlements to the poor. That is public services which have to reach the poor. They are saying this will enable reaching the services to the poor. The essential logic of this project, when you read it, see some of the things that uh, bothered us are given now, just one or two things and then move on because you need to know where I am speaking from. Uh, one of the things is that there has been no feasibility report at all in this project. This project has never had a feasibility report. It's a huge, mammoth, massive project expected to cover the whole population of India plus. And yet, it has never had the feasibility report. It is just an idea. And the idea is now being converted into a project which is going to be funded, rolled out, and made to cover the whole population. The second thing is there has never been a budget. They've never budgeted how much it's going to cost. So we don't really know either in terms of time, or practicability, or cost, or use, precisely what this project is supposed to deliver and at what cost. So we don't really know that. Yeah? So when I'm now talking about what the UID authority has been saying that this project will be do, it is only about a strategic overview of the project. It is not. It does not come from feasibility, or a, it doesn't come from a study of the situation in the country, from where they derive the requirement for UID. So this is actually working from an idea which germinated somewhere. And we talk about where all these ideas are, where all this idea has come from. Now what they say is that there are many people in this country who don't have an identity. And because they don't have an identity, the state doesn't know they exist. Or they can't assert their existence with the state. And for them to be able to get rights, services and entitlements, the state needs to know that they exist and they need to be able to assert their existence with the state. So you need an identity for every person. This project is expected to produce that identity. So the idea is that this project will, when it gives a number to every person, and it's a unique number, then every person can be identified with the state. You can go, anybody can go to the state and say, listen, I exist. And if they say, prove to me that you exist, you have a way of proving that you do exist as a resident of this country. Right? So the first assumption of this project is that it is because people don't have a, unique, a way of identifying themselves in the state, that the state doesn't know that they are there and that's why they don't get services. The uh, second thing is that there is a lot of corruption and a lot of leakage in our system. And that corruption and leakage is taking away all the, uh, all the resources of this country and taking it away from the poor. So, <laughs> so the idea is that you should find a way of plugging these, this corruption and this leakage in the system. And you need, you need some kind of a mechanism that will help you do that. 
they said a lot of the uh, amenities that have to go, the services that have to go to the poor, it doesn't reach the poor because the, you know, it, it just vanishes somewhere in between. Somebody else takes it away. So leakage is one, and the other, uh, the other thing that they call, well, what they call uh, fake identities, right? People pretend to be who they are not okay. Or I can pretend to be four people and register myself. And so instead of getting nothing, which I am entitled to nothing because I'm not, you know, poverty line, I get four people's four people's rations because I've got four identities which helps me get it from the Russian shop. So what they've been saying is that there are a lot of fake documents which have been created. To do away with the fakes, it is important for us to have some mechanism and this will be that mechanism. What they also say is that you will have uh, two facilities that this will provide. One is of deduplication. That is each person, because it's a unique ID, each person will have only one ID. So you can't be somebody here and somebody else, somewhere else and try and get, you know, duplicate the kind of things that you can get from the state. The second thing is that it will help in portability. So there's a large percentage of our population, large, you know, which moves around a lot. Particularly the working classes move around a lot. And when they move, they can't, it's difficult for them to identify themselves in each place where they go. This will help in portability. It will provide a portable identity. Wherever you go, you can, you can authenticate yourself. It doesn't matter whether you are in Kashmir or Kalyan Kuti, you can authenticate yourself through the same process. What they also say is that this is a completely voluntary process. People who want to take it can take it, those who don't want don't find it. I'm only telling you what the claims that are made, I'm not telling you about what it actually is. I'm first telling you the claims so that we discuss why there's a problem with some of this. So first thing is that it's voluntary. Second, that we are not going to hold, this is what the UIT authority says, we are not going to hold much information about any of you, just the basic identity, basic information that is needed for us to give you an identity, which means what? Your name, your date of birth, your address, your parents' name, um, your uh, gender, and uh, politically correct UIDAI came to this that they should not just have male and female, but they have male, female, and transgender, showing a certain kind of modernity that most other government systems don't have. And then your biometrics. So your biometrics will be your photograph, uh, fingerprints, and uh, iris scan. And that's about all they said they would have. Then the last claim which I deal with now is that they said we are not going to, we won't give anyone any information from this. This is the information that will be held with the UID authority. We will not give anybody any information. We will just authenticate by saying yes or no. So if somebody, you know, if you, if you want to be authenticated or somebody wants to authenticate you, you give your name and your address, they will send that to the UID authority and they will say whether the name and the address match or not. So they will just say yes or no. If you give your biometric and you give your name, they will just say whether the biometric matches. And in this case, you know, when you have to authenticate, the biometric will only be fingerprints because they can't be doing virus scans or anything else. So the, uh, you just give your fingerprint and the fingerprint will help them indicate whether you are or are not the person that you say. So their claim was that they are not going to be giving any further data than this. Now I'm just going to demolish these three claims first because it's become more and more apparent now that none of these claims actually hold water before going on to discuss the rest of the project. 